Psalm 32. Taken from 2 Samuel 12. Where Nathan approaches David and says, Thou art the man. David's reaction is Psalm 32. David had committed us two great sins. Because all our sins. There's really no great sins. For all his sins come short of the glory of God. Lying is just as bad as adultery. Stealing is just as bad as murder. Because they're all sins. But here's David. It's recorded by the Holy Spirit, David's prayer. After finding out, God knew his sin. Blessed means happy is he whose transgressions are forg is forgiven. So, it's in the present tense. Is, blessed is. And when your transgressions have been come to God, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Whose sins is covered. Now this is repentance. Now in the Old Testament law, there was no covering for adultery and murder. For the Christian, we confess our sin. You commit adultery, if you confess your sins and, and you don't commit adultery, you don't mur well, murder, I mean, you go to jail. You confess your sins. He's faithful and just to, to forgive us and cleanse us of our sin. David could not go to the tabernacle and bring any offering. There was none. The Old Testament law was David was supposed to be put to death. And then long t along comes a time in the Gospels, which is neither Old Testament, neither New Testament. Jesus shows up and they bring this woman taken in the very act of adultery. And Lord, shall we kill her? How unmerciful is Jesus, you know, cruel. And then, you know, if he lets her go free, well, he, he's not a law-abiding citizen. And he says to the man, you know, he, was the, he that, you know, has not sinned, let him cast the first stone. And the Gospels are a transition into the book of Acts and to, we're under a new way and we're not under the law anymore today. Adultery is a cruel sin against families, against people, against a husband or wife by their spouse stepping out on them. Murder is you ruined a family who had a loved one. But lies can do the same thing. Alcohol can do the same thing. Smoking can do the same thing. Stealing can do the, I mean, you brought a hardship on other people. And David says in the Old Testament, blessed, happy, presently is he whose transgressions are forgiven. David has been forgiven. And what the law says, there is no forgiveness. And today there are pastors in the pulpit, they won't forgive somebody who committed adultery. And yet, many of them commit the sin of pride and being proud and never confess their sin. Whose sin is covered. Repentance. There it is. Old Testament. And there's no blood of Jesus Christ. There's no looking forward to Calvary. That hasn't happened yet. Blessed is the man Pleasant tense is unto whom the Lord, the Lord God, imputed, not iniquity. There is no charge. God will say to him, What sins are you talking about? And afterwards, when the devil comes up, remember what David did with Bathsheba? And God's like, I don't remember. Now, wait a minute, God, hold on. Now, we can't play that right now because there is no sense of Jesus' blood, okay? I know the law, God, and you have stated that the fact is that adultery and murder and, and idolatry and there are sins that you have said, I cut you off from the children of Israel. You're done. You're finished. And as far as David, 
and and Solomon with his sins with his wives. I don't know what sins you're talking about, devil. There is listen. They're not looking forward to Calvary in the Old Testament, but there is mercy and grace in the Old Testament. David and Solomon had been adopted into God's family like a Christian today. And God told David, I forgive you. But you got to pay the piper. You've got to have Galatians 6, 7 hasn't been writ written yet, but God is not deceived. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. David, you're going to reap. I forget it was four or five sheep. You're going to reap it in your own children. Starting with that baby you had just conceived with that sheep. That's going to be the first lamb. Sowing reapings in the Old Testament, sowing reapings in the gospel, and sowing reapings in the New Testament. But forgiveness, here it is. And the state here is forgiven in the Old Testament. Now, my standing today is I'm in Christ. I can't step out of Christ. Now, our state is we're wishy washy. One moment I'm right with God, and the next moment I'm not right with God. One moment I'm holy and pure and righteous before God, next minute I'm a vile sinner. And, and I've always, I could never get this right. I got the standing and the state. Oh, I finally feel like stand. You're standing. You're going nowhere. That's in Christ. State, we got 50 states in America. 50 different options we can do, good or bad. Maybe that'll help you remind you what state and standing. Stand, I'm going, not moving, I'm in Christ. State, I could be in this state tomorrow, I could be in that state today, I could be in that state next week. It, it's wishy washy. David had a stand in God, not Jesus. There is no Jesus. But yet, not for blood atonement. The love of God upon David and Solomon. Their state. One minute, you know, they're fighting, they're battling, they're, they're, God is pleased. Next minute, he's sleeping with a woman he needs not to be sleeping with. And then there's victory. The, 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 the battle is won. And, and the next moment, he kills a soldier of his. The state of David in his life, he's running from the fear of King Saul. God, help me, please, God. You're not listening to me, God. Oh, God. And next day, day uh, God, you're so wonderful. You're so great. You're mighty to hear. And that's for the Christians today. We have a standing and we have a state. Blessed is the man, happy is the man presently, whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. That's 1 John 1, 9. When the adversary comes up and says, God, Father, whatever he calls them, I don't think he calls Father, God, that Christian, see that sins? And when the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ says, there's no sin here, blessed is the man. You make God happy when the devil comes up and says, hey, that, that, that Christian here, look at that sin. And God can say, I don't know what you're saying, you're talking about. It's under the blood. That pleases God. Now, when the devil brings an accusation up to it, and he turns to the father, he says, you see that sin? He turns to the son, like, father, yeah. He hasn't confessed that yet. That's why we need to confess our sins immediately. Don't give the devil a chance. Because I don't know how quick he goes up to heaven and says, hey, look at that. I don't know. The Bible says the devil in Job 1 and 2 left God's throne, so he's not always there, but he's there. And whose spirit, that spirit belongs to God. That's man's spirit. Whenever somebody dies, saved or lost, that spirit returns to God. That body goes in the grave. That soul goes to heaven or hell. That spirit is, is God breathed. And God breathed into Adam, he became a living spirit, I think. Let me check that out, Genesis 2. I want to make sure I get this right. Genesis 2. I may be so, but I want to make sure I get this one right. He says in Genesis 2, 7, And the Lord God formed man out of dust of the ground. That's your body. 
And I'll go back to just now, thanks to Genesis 3. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. There's the spirit. And man became a living soul. That's the eternalness of man. The body, when it dies, goes in the grave. That spirit belongs to God. It's God breathing in you. And when you die, he takes that breath back. They can do all the CPR they want. And God says, listen, I'm not putting that breath back in that nostril. You're dead. Your brain needs oxygen. And if your brain is depleted of oxygen so long, if you did come back to life, you'd be not right in the mind. Your body's been depleted. And that brain gets not enough oxygen for a longer period of time. That's it. You're gone. They can do whatever you want. There is no guile. Mis, uh, misleading. Jesus, they said, had no guile. The body's full of sin, no matter what testament you're in. And you say, well, how can John say we don't sin? We don't, because we've been spiritually circumcised, our soul from the body. The Old Testament saints didn't have that spiritual circumcision of the body and soul. It stayed together. So today, as a born-again, Bible-believing, saved Christian, my body is sinning, but my soul is not affected. Because of spiritual circumcision. I mean, there's a physical circumcision, but that don't do nothing for the sin. That just makes you one part into another part. But when I confess my sins, 1 John 1, 9 says it's forgiven and forgotten. And that makes God happy. Now, what about churches today that don't re don't preach or don't bring to a new... To, no, no, wait, wait, wait. How about these new churches today that don't bring to a lost man repentance for salvation? Then there is no salvation. Because David had to confess. I have to confess. Without confession, you're not pleasing God. And you can't have your sins forgiven if you don't confess. You can't have your sins covered if you don't confess. And there is, there is no imputation if you don't confess your sins. Because what would God need to save you from if you don't confess your sins? When I kept silence, my bones wax old through my roaring. All the days long. The day and night my hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into drought of summer. Selah. What's that about? That's when David didn't confess his sin. That's David living on his own before Nathan shows up. That's David after the next morning after Bathsheba got up, got her clothes on and went home. That's after the, the, the morning that he gets news from Joab that Uriah has been dead in battle. That's David saying, I, I, I did that. I'm guilty. David had a guilty conscience before Nathan came. According to verse 3 and 4. And God used that conscience and God used that threat, that sweating, that anguish of David to say, Nathan, go see him now. He's ready. David had the fear of God, and that's what brought him to salvation. He's, what's God going to do to me? How's God going to treat me? Oh, the law said, oh, Lord, oh, God, I'm in, oh, what did I do? Verse 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. After Nathan came, says, thou art the man. He turned to God. He says, God, that man you sent me is right. I am that man he told me about. And when you go into any public ministry, whatever it is, and you bring the gospel to these people, and they turn and say, you know what? Yeah, I am that sinner. I am, oh, I'm condemned to hell. I don't want to go to hell. That's where David is right now. When that man brought me the gospel on April 21st, that Saturday afternoon, when Joe opened up the Bible and said, you're going to hell, you're a sinner. I said, no, I don't want to go to hell. I didn't say I wasn't a sinner. I said, I don't want to go to hell. And he told me how to get saved and to get out of hell. I got saved. 
What did I have to confess? I had to confess my sin. I was a sinner. I didn't know all my sins. I knew some of them. And I tell you, that afternoon, the next day, man, I felt clean. Why? I had been cleansed. I have confessed my sins and got right with God. I have kept silent for 18 years. For a while, I went to a priest of the Catholic Church. He couldn't do nothing. I never felt clean from that. I took the wafer and I took the blood of Jesus and that didn't do nothing for me. I tried to be good. Good wasn't good enough. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, God. Tell that to a Catholic. I go into the priest, I go in this room, room, I tell my priest. That's not the Z that Dave is talking about. When you go back to 2 Samuel chapter 12, there is no priest. Nathan's a prophet. He ain't a priest. David didn't go into a closet with a priest. He went into a, into a room, a closet, somewhere by himself with God and said, God, I had the relationship of adultery with Bathsheba and I murdered her husband. Nathan's right. I am the man. And my iniquity have I not hid. I bet you David not only confessing those sins, he's confessing every sin he knew. I did that the other morning. Man, with my ear and, and my wife dying and the sins, man, I'm confessing every sin I know to be maybe not confessed. Lord, I'm guilty. I'm sorry. I am confessing my sins and I'm relying on the scriptures that you'll forgive and cleanse me. And God does. That's what David's doing. And when we have that secret sin that we love and joy and we fight that sin. And when we when we do that sin and then we're, Lord, God, I, I, I try to fight it and I did. Lord, I'm sorry. That's what David's saying. Lord, that's the sin that troubles my whole life. Oh, I'm sorry. And Lord, you know, sometimes with the sin, I'm not sorry. I try to make excuses for it. <laughs> Lord, right now I'm sorry. That's just, I know it's my sin. You know what the trouble with people today, as far as the public ministry I've seen, and in churches, they don't sin. They don't confess their sin. Ah, oh, just say this prayer, just say these words, or oh, I'm okay. The, the number one I hear thing I've been hearing all over the years is I'm good. That's not the thing. That is not the response when somebody brings you the gospel. I am good. No, you're not. And I ratify that instantly say, there is none that do it good. If David would have told Nathan, I'm a good person, this, we would not have Psalm 32. We would not have the sure mercies of David. Things would have changed in Jerusalem. If David would have told Nathan, off with your head, how dare you speak to me, the king like that, things would have changed. But David had a contrite heart. David had a, had a, a broken spirit. God, David was upset, not at God, but with God because David done wrong. And God saw that repentant heart and said, how bad adultery is. David, I forgive you. Because this afternoon or morning, whatever it was, Psalm 32, when David spilt out his guts to God, he spilt out his heart. Honestly. As today, when we witness to somebody and they say, yeah, you're right. The Bible's right. Jesus is correct. I want that faith. And they confess their sins. And when I tell them, I say, listen, the next few moments in silence, don't tell me. It's not my job. And that next few moments when I witness somebody and they call upon Christ, I say, you need to spend the next few moments telling Christ what sins you remember right now. And you confess them before God. That's what David's doing. And the Bible records, David went off. Nathan, I don't know if Nathan's there, but David went off and, man, he poured his heart out to God. That's why we have the sure mercies of, of David. That's why Jesus Christ is going to sit on David's throne because David loved God and he realized, I am in big trouble. And God, if I don't get it right with you, I am going to hell. And you can't get the modern American to realize that today. You know why people in China are getting right? You know why people in India are getting right? You know why people in the island nations are turning to God? Because they fear God. They fear the wrath of God. John chapter 3, verse 36. You turn to America today. Listen, I've been on the streets, all over the streets. From Connecticut to Florida. I'm good. 
what gives you the right? I had a Christian today blast me out because I was talking against politics. You're gone. I hope you have fun. I hope you keep on worshiping your Republican God. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, God, not to a man. My iniquity have I not. Dave is not only confessing adultery. Dave is not only telling God I murdered. David said I lied. I tried to get the man drunk. You know, I lied to my servant the other day. I didn't pay my maid the full. I mean, whatever sins David did, he is confessing them to God right now. David's at the point on his knees right now as a man who would believe on Jesus Christ that moment he gets his name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is where David is. This is where I was. I don't remember that afternoon. I, I remember praying. I remember in tears. I remember, God, I'm a sinner. I don't know what sins yet. All the sins. And over the years, since April 21st, 1987, I have gone to God and named them sins. And when the Bible says there's a sin I didn't know I'm doing, I'm doing, I named those sins. I didn't hide from them. And by Bible reading, I realized I am a sinner. I see the Bible, and I see the sins, and I see the sins of my... I never confess the sin I don't do. I confess the sins that I do do. You say, how can you not confess a sin that you don't do? When I see somebody else sin. That's none of my business. It's the sin I do. David had many problems with his family. David had many problems with his military. David had many problems all over Jerusalem. But he says, my sin. He says, I acknowledge my sin and my iniquity. I didn't hide before God. America does completely opposite. And there are people calling upon God to sinner's prayer. And when, when the time comes, they'll find themselves in hell. That's sad. I said, David said, I will confess my transgressions unto the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. No man but to God. David did not go into a Catholic confessional booth. He went to God. Take that to your priest. By the way, this is one of Martin Luther's favorite psalms. Psalm 32, 51, 130, and 143. Or Luther, Martin Luther's favorite uh, hymn, uh, psalm. I wonder where you find that other junior Luther with the name of Michael. I wonder what psalms he would like, if any. I acknowledge my sin, that's important, unto thee, God. And my iniquity have I not hid, that's important. I said I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, that's important. And thou, God, forgaveth thy iniquity of my sins, Selah. Look at that scene, remember I told you that's a second advent reference? Guess what Israel's going to be doing when they see Jesus coming back on horseback? They're going to be getting right, getting right with Jehovah, getting right through Jesus. Say, that's the Messiah, the Lord God. We, we, we've sinned. We realize that Jacob's trouble has now come. We know we're in the seventh year of Jacob's trouble. We have sinned against you, God. We have rejected you, Jesus. We are sorry. Jesus pick up and say, it's all well now. Get on board. Let's go. You know, uh, Rahab in Jericho did the same thing when those spies showed up. We fear you. We fear your God. You protect me, my family, by your God. Sure thing. She didn't have the blood of Calvary. What saved Rahab and her family? A red scarlet thread. It wasn't the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary. She wasn't looking forward to Jesus on the cross. They, you know what the spies were looking for? Okay, which window has that red scarlet? Yeah, that's the one right there. Now, red would picture the type of blood, but the scarlet thread is not blood. Oh, much is like, you know, the Holy Spirit is the dove. That ain't the dove, like a dove. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in, thy, in a time when thou mayest be found. What is David talking about in verse 6? He's repented of his sins. And David says, you know what? I feel good. 
God, I feel not. I, I feel clean, God. Do it. God, you know everybody who does what I just did. Whatever morning that what, let's say afternoon. That afternoon David got up off his knees. He said, you know, if everybody did this, they would feel just as good as I feel. I felt like that April 21st, 1987. I got up off my knees. I felt, wow, what just happened to me? Not only did I not go to hell or not going to hell, I became, I never realized I became a child of God. My name was written in the last book of life and all what God has shown me was going to happen. And there's still much things, brand new things to come I will never understand. Surely in the floods of great waters, troubles, problems, sin, evil, all the life is good. Not according to David. He said all the troubles and problems that the world can give you. Great waters, overflowing. Some people, you know, going through, they, they ask, how, how's things going? I say, I'm a bobber in the water. What's that mean? I'm floating. Every once in a while, I go under. <laughs> but I pop back up, thanks to the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes that great big fish grabs me down. I wonder what that is. That's a reptile. That's a dragon. That's a leviathan that pulls me down. Some people think it's a Christian. Ain't no Christian. You know, is it one expression to over their head? <laughs> That's what David's saying. Listen, I almost drowned one time. I had that, that, that great feeling of going to die underwater. It was God that got me out of that. They shall not come near unto him. What? The flood. The water. And he's like... The troubles and problems, even if I die from that, the Bible says for me today, absent from the body, present with the Lord. You want to kill me? I ain't going to pull a gun and shoot you out. If God says, okay, it's done, pull the trigger, I'll give him a crown of, of martyrship. <laughs> okay, Lord. And if it's not my time to go, God will. Listen, there's a preacher. I forget what his name is. I should write it down somewhere. When I go back. The guy is preaching the word of God, and a guy came up to him, pulled the trigger up to his face, Pulled the trigger and the gun backfired and got the got the person who was against God. Saved the preacher. Listen, if God wants you dead, he's going to kill you no matter if you have a gun or not. That's what people hate about me preaching. And if you're not, if God doesn't want you dead, he'll protect you through everything. I've been told by a re reliable preacher, sort of, that the, there have been Christians who are going out there and pull the trigger with a gun in their mouth and still survive. Like God's like, I ain't done with you yet. You just messed up your life. I'm still going to use you. And when you when God is done with you, he'll take that spirit. And he, oh, give me CPR. Give me the paddles. And God's like, I'm done. And you may say, God, I'm done. I'm finished. Go ahead. Boom. Wake up in the hospital. What happened? I ain't done with you yet. We can't keep life and we can't give up life. I would hate to kill somebody before God's timing and then send them off to hell. I like to see that at the judgment seat of Christ. That's my gun thing for today. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Thou art my hiding place. Now look at the tribulation passage here. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Gee, I want that trouble. You know, David mentions trouble a lot. In Revelation 12, God says about that, that woman, he has prepared her a place from the protection of the dragon, the devil, the old serpent. Look at that. Jacob's trouble. Thou shalt compass and circle me about the songs of deliverance. What's that word? Selah. Second Advent, also a musical rest. Man, those Jews are going to be having such a time in, in Jacob's trouble, and he's going to send 144,000, not Jehovah Witnesses, the 144,000 out, and they're going to go to the Jewish nation, and they're going to say, hey, listen, I don't know exactly what they're going to say, but they're going to say, you guys have been wrong. I know that. 
and you are in a time of Jacob's trouble. Remember that in the Bible? Remember that in the Old Testament? And God is angry with you. You need to repent. Not buy magazines. By the way, when I, I was I was doing a study today with Jehovah Witnesses, oh, we well, shut the Bible. No, the Bible says the 144,000 are male virgins. So when a male Jehovah Witness comes up to him, ask him the question: Have you ever had sex? If he says yes, bye bye. There's, I think I said 14.5 billion Jehovah Witnesses. You're at 144,000. Yeah. Bye-bye. Woman Jehovah Witness comes here. Are you a male? No. Bye-bye. Because that's what the Jehovah Witness, they believe they're the 144,000 virgin males, and there are over 15 billion of them now. Heresy. Fraud. Boy, I'm hitting everybody tonight. I, God, well, there's a will of God. Instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. And what did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. What are we in the tribulation period? Revelation 12 says God has prepared a place. David, I mean, Jesus said, pray that your flight not be in the in 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 winter. Pray not be on the Sabbath. God is going to take a remnant the Jews and go that way. No, 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 stop, no, that way. All right, you want to go that way? You're going to get you're, you're going to get killed. You go the way I tell you to go. What is that a picture of David being chased by Saul, who's a type of Antichrist? David, I want you to go over here. Why? Just get over there. And Saul couldn't find him. Like I said yesterday, they're going around the mountain when he comes. Man, Saul and David are chasing each other around this mountain. And there's one point that Saul is chasing David. David's here. And Jonathan comes out and says, hi, David. How you doing? That's going to happen in the tribulation. What? That Jew's going to be running from the Antichrist. Some some of them, the Antichrist, it ain't going to be. And then a Jonathan is going to show up. A Gentile is going to show up. So let me help you. Let me take care of you. Like a Rahab, like the ones that brought David to cots and food, like Abigail brought David food. Those are the type of the Gentile, those are the type of people who are going to help the Jews in the tribulation period. God says, I'll instruct you. I will guide thee in my eye. In my eye, God says, as far as the nation of Israel, they're the apple of God's eye. Now, God knows and he said in the scriptures that the Jews are stiff-necked. They're a hard-headed people. True. So what's he saying in verse 9 about the Jew? And what is, what is David saying? Outside what God is saying. David is saying, listen, get right, repent. Man, it feels good. Get in the righteousness. Man, I feel great. I feel clean. Why don't you guys do it? I bet you David went out preaching after this. Because you know the first thing that happens when, when you get truly saved is you go out telling people. The next day I went to my father and told him he's going to hell. You know, if you tell me you're a Christian, you're saved, and you don't go out and witness, I let my light shine. I, 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 I don't know about you. James says you're to have works after salvation, faith and works. I battled one person. Oh, uh, this person, he's saved. I'm like, no, I don't think so. When I asked him if he was saved, he said, oh, I go to the Jehovah Witness Hall. Be mad at me all you want. That's not the answer. And then when you ask somebody, you say, oh, you know, about the salvation, I remember when I was baptized. That's not the answer. Don't get mad at me. When I ask you about your soul, only by Jesus Christ am I saved. Glory to God, I'm going to heaven. And I'm trying to tell people, I, I pass out these gospel tracts. Or I love them chick tracks. That's somebody's going to heaven. Be not as the horse. And he's talking to a stubborn nation called Israel. Or as a mule. You know, mules are the stubbornest animals ever. I, I, had, another, I had a preacher tell me one time, he, he watched a, a baseball game with farmers, and they played with mules. 
you know, the far the farmer would hit the ball, then he try to get that mule over to first base while the guy who got the mule out in the outfield trying to get the mule to get the ball and trying to get and, and say it was just comical because the mule will not do what you want it to do. And it's amazing that Jesus Christ got on a horse's ass colt and he said, let's go into Jerusalem. And they said that colt had never been written, written before. It's amazing that Balaam's ass talked to him when there's such a rebellious animal and yet God said, I got some words for you to tell Balaam. Okay. What's a human being do? I want you to give that guy a gospel track. No. I didn't bring any. And thou shalt redeem an ass with a lamb. If you don't redeem the ass with a lamb, you shall break his neck. I'm the ass that needs to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, to take away the sin of the world. When I go out there and present the gospel, if you want to be an ass and not have the Lamb of God, God's going to break your neck and, and give you eternal life in hell. And no, I didn't cuss. It's a shame you don't know what I'm talking about in the Bible. Which have no understanding. <laughs> Look at that. The horse and the mule have no understanding, according to God. God made them. Another place he says the Pequot, the peacock has no understanding. She puts her eggs in the ground and then she goes steps on them. Dumb. Aren't Americans even more stupid? Aren't people more stupid? I'm going to go play around. I'm going to go have sex. I'm going to have a baby and kill it. You no know, understanding. Whose mouth must be held with bit and bridle. You know what that is. Least they come near unto thee. It's pressure. Somebody, you got to guide that horse with a thing that hurts its mouth. A horse, the Bible says, will go run into battle. Stupid. Stubborn in direction and pressure, verse 9. Many sorrows, life is good, shall be to the wicked. Oh, it may not look so. You know, the wicked has to protect their, 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 their interests. They're going to buy safes and locks and guns and and. Security people with money and all that, and they they gotta buy alcohol, they gotta buy drugs. You know the the, the, the fears they have inside and the, and the problems they have. But he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. And I know that that's the fruit of the spirit today: love, joy, peace, long suffering, patience. I don't have patience, but I do have patience in the Holy Spirit. When I stand in Christ. <laughs> Now, when I get out of my, my standing, I'm in a state. Some states are less patient than other states. I have a state called red lights, which I'm not patient. I got a state with bad drivers. I ain't got no patience. I, I have a state where I'm in a long grocery line. Somebody breaks out pennies to pay. I ain't got the patience. Or the cashier is talking and talking and they're talking and talking. I ain't got the patience. Okay, what about your sins? Be glad. There is there's a statement. Be glad. Help out with here. Be glad. At what? Verse 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed, both blessed means happy. Is the man present tense, whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Be glad in the Lord. And rejoice, that's happiness, and be righteous, ye righteous. What's the righteous? God has forgiven you. If God has forgiven you and forgiven you your sin and don't remember your sin, that's righteous. That moment you step back in the state, uh, then you become unrighteous. Shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. By what? Blessed is he who transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man whom the Lord Lord imputed not iniquity, in whose spirit there is no God. When God says, hey, I am not charging him with any sin. It's under the blood for the Christian. It's gone. 
There is no sin to be talking about. Rejoice. You're clean. That's what that is. 